I received in the mail recently a Mixuko frame from Shendrones. It was sent to me by AsiaTees.com, ATs. Uh, and thank you to them for that. And I thought what I would do with this one is I would work you guys through one of the hardest parts of building out one of these frames, which is getting all your electronics to fit, <laughs> getting the electronics into a package that will fit into one of these tiny, tiny frames is a real challenge. So I'm going to walk you through that part of the build and show you how to build an electronics sort of sandwich, if you will, that you could put into a Mitsuko or a Mixuko or a Krieger or a QQ190 or really any of them. Frankly, you could put it into a QAV210 if you want to. I mean, it'll all go wherever you want it to go. A nice compact little sandwich of electronics that'll fit into your frame. Let's get started. If you're going to get all your electronics into one of these tiny, tiny, tiny frames, then you're going to be direct soldering things. That's just the way it is. Even though there may be room to get the gear on there with the pins still attached, you're not going to want a bunch of loose servo cables hanging all over the place, just flopping out of the build. Okay, so you're not going to want that, and direct soldering is the way to go. Some people have asked why I don't direct solder some of my other builds that, that, that you've seen on the channel. And the answer is that, you know, direct soldering looks great, but the minute you have, like, maybe a bad gyro like I had recently, and then you have to change out your flight controller, and you have to desolder every single thing from the flight controller, and then it's all a big mess, and you have to re-solder it, you can understand why I use connectors. Now... Uh, so I, you know, they don't look as nice, but you know what? I don't, I don't build the copter to look at it. I build it to fly it. And it, it, the first one I ever built, I built to look real nice. And the first time I crashed it, it didn't look nice anymore. And I said, well, that was a waste of time. So if you're going to direct solder, you got to plan your build. You got to plan it out because if you just start wiring things up, Number one, you're going to wire something up wrong. You're going to miss something. You're going to forget something. And you also are going to need to make sure your wires are all the right length so there's, everything is neat and compact and fits. So planning the build out is the first step. This is the X4R SB receiver. It is the naked D-pinned version. Now you can buy them D-pinned, but I just buy them with pins and D-pin them myself. It's easier and cheaper that way. Uh, there is also a version of the X4R SB or the that doesn't have pins at all. It just has one of these little connectors. I do not like that one because it doesn't have the analog voltage telemetry, which sometimes I might want, although I'm not using it in my builds currently. And it also doesn't have the RSSI pad. So it cannot output RSSI to the ROSD. And I like having, I like more data is better. I'm a big fan of data. So I like the X4R SB and I just deepen it myself or you can order a naked version if, if you don't want to deepen it yourself, if you don't trust your skills with a soldering iron. But, but frankly, if you don't trust your skills with a soldering iron, this may not be the build for you. No offense intended, none taken, I hope. This is a job that will involve a lot of fiddly soldering, so you should really feel comfortable deep hitting one of these. It's not hard. Okay, X4R SB receiver. Of course, the F303 flight controller, my current favorite. My current favorite, the V2, only made it more of my favorite, and... Uh, if something else better comes out, I will definitely let you know. I'm a big fan of new, interesting, exciting things. But so far, this one has taken all the boxes for me. Now, you may notice that there is something missing up here, and that is my trusty open log device for my black box logging. What? Joshua Bardwell is going to build a copter without black box logging? What is happening to the world? No, no, hang on. The F-303 has an onboard data flash chip. Quite a large one. In fact, I think the largest one on the market, at least tied for the largest on the market, it's 128 megabits or 16 megabytes. And depending on your logging rate, that'll give you between about 10 and 20 minutes of logging. You can even extend that to maybe 30 or 40 minutes if you're willing to go to a slightly lower logging rate. But by my standards, about 10 to 20 minutes of logging, depending on your loop time and your logging rate. And that is more than enough for the kind of tuning that I will do to get this copter running good. It's not gonna be enough to go fly all day at the race and then when I get home, pull some videos out for you guys and do some stick overlays, which is what the open log is good for. But it's more than enough and on a build like this, you just don't have anywhere to stick the darn thing. Oh, maybe I'll try and find a place to stick it just on principle. What the heck, let's add it in there and we can always take it out if we decide we don't want it. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Oh, now all is right with the world. There's my, my open log. I got like a cowboy without a horse. <laughs> okay. 
We got the TS5823 video transmitter. That's my go-to. 200 milliwatts is a good choice. And these things are cheap as beans. I think they're about 10 or 11 bucks from myrcmart.com. That's that's where I order them, and I that's they, they've been plenty reliable. The only got you with these things is you cannot run them off a of battery voltage. See how it says 7 to 24 volts here? That's a lie. That's a lie. You can run it on 24 volts. It will technically not immediately destroy itself if you run it off of 20 volts. But run it off a 12 volt regulator and everything will be great. Okay. But if you, everybody who has these and they've burned up, I suspect most of them, not all of them, are not running them off a regulator. And that's a big issue. Here is the Red Rotor RROSD Pro uh, Mini PDB and OSD. Now, normally you might have a hard time fitting an OSD on a Mixuco, but uh, not me. I, I'm going to put a PDB on there anyway, and I get a free OSD. Well, free for space anyway. It's no bigger than the PDB. Obviously, it's more expensive. But uh, yeah, I think of it from the perspective of, of space and complexity of the build, it's basically free. I'm going to hook up all this stuff to my PDB anyway. May as well get an OSD while I'm at it. And, of course, the 1177 camera that, uh, that is the sort of go-to for FPV pilots these days. All right, those, that's all my gear. Let's talk about how it's going to get wired up. Here's my wiring diagram. It's not complicated. Well, it's a little cluttered, but it's not complicated. Let's talk about why I put things where I did. We'll start with the receiver. The receiver is going to get its ground, power, and signal from these three pads. Make sure that you've got it right side up and that you're on the correct side of the receiver when you're soldering it because it can be easy if it's deep pinned to not really accidentally like use these three or be on the wrong side or something like that. Those are going to go, of course, to the S bus connector on the F303. Technically, you could use any power and any ground that you like. If for some reason you find it more convenient to do it differently, you can, but I'm just going to use these three here. We're also going to take the RSSI from the X4R and we're going to run it over to the RSSI pad, which is on the bottom row or the front row of this camera connector on the RROSD. There's another connection here, and that is from the telemetry or smart port telemetry pin on the X4R, and that's going to go to the transmit pin on UART2 of the F303. What I like to do is I turn the X4R over, and I solder to the back side of this pin. I'm not actually literally soldering to this pin. It is the pin closest to the edge of the board, the front edge of the board. And you just turn it over and you find that one. And you just put the tiniest dab of solder on there and get it to stick. And then you'll see when I get to the actual build, I reinforce it with tape or, or hot glue or something. Because it's a very, very small joint. And that way I don't have any uh, connectors on this receiver at all. It's just a bunch of wires coming out of it. I choose UART2 and not UART1 because I like to use UART1 for black box. UART1 is shared with the USB port on the F303, which means that you can't use UART1 and the configurator at the same time. And if you put telemetry on UART1, then telemetry will only work when the copter is armed. It will stop working when you disarm. When you disarm, the configurator will take over the USB port and the UART. So I like my telemetry to work all the time. For example, I like to sometimes just plug a battery in real quick and look at my transmitter to see what the battery voltage is. I just use it as the world's most complicated battery checker, right? Well, if I, I don't want to have to arm the copter to do that. Whereas I put black box on UART1 because black box, of course, only works when the copter is armed. So I'm not really losing anything by putting black box on UART1. So telemetry is going on UART2. Black box is going on UART1. Black box, we have the RX pad going to the TX pad and VCC and ground again you could get VCC and ground 5 volts and ground from anywhere convenient I'd like to just wire them straight up to the UART is a convenient place to get them the camera of course is going to the camera connector and the video transmitter is going to the VTX connector here on the RROSD now I have got my video transmitter set up to get 12 volt regulated power because I run off of 4S if you run off of 3S, you should use raw power. There's no harm in using the 12 volt regulated power, but what happens is that as your battery gets below perhaps about 12.5 volts ish, the regulator just drops out and it's not doing anything anymore, and you're running off of raw power anyway. Basically, if you're running on 3S, almost none of your pack is actually going to be going through the regulator anyway, so you may as well just pick raw. It's not really doing anything for you. Uh, if you don't want to change that solder bridge over, I don't think there's any harm in running it off at 12 volts. 
I just, I, you're not actually getting regulated power though, so don't kid yourself. This is a drop down regulator. It is not a boost regulator. So there's a kind of regulator called a boost buck regulator. And what that does is if it's a 12 volt boost buck regulator, if you're below 12 volts, it'll pull you up. If you're above 12 volts, it'll pull you down and you'll always get 12 volts out of it. That is not the kind of regulator on this board. It pulls you down to 12 volts. But then as you get below about 12.5 volts, it just passes the voltage through unregulated and you just, it, it continues to drop. What that means to you is if you're running off of 3S, you will probably want to add an external LC filter or at least a capacitor uh, on your video transmitter. If you're running off of 4S and you're running 12 volt power, you should have enough filtering that you may get some scratchy lines occasionally depending on how noisy your ESCs are, but you're not going to fry this thing. We've also then got power going to the F303. There's a 5 volt output on the bottom row, the front row of this connector. So we're going to run that over to any convenient header. And then there's two more things here that I haven't depicted. Uh, one of them is we're going to want VBAT telemetry going to the F303. So we're going to need to go from the ESC pads or the battery pads, it doesn't matter which, and there's a VBAT pad on the underside of this board. Now I didn't put that on here because I didn't want to put the two copies of the board on there and make it confusing. It's a very simple thing, but it's not depicted here and I want you to be aware of that. The VBAT connection. The other thing that I haven't depicted here is the buzzer. Now I probably am going to try to put a buzzer on here because I just I like having a buzzer on my copters, uh, but it, I haven't depicted it here because I'm not exactly sure where it's going to go. And the buzzer connector is again on the underside of the F303 board. So those two things are not depicted here. And that's our wiring. So that's how we're going to wire it up. I, I really feel like this is a beneficial thing to do because there are so many little details here when you're soldering this up. Uh, if you make a dumb mistake, uh, it's going to be such a pain in the butt to go back and fix it. So you want to definitely double check this, make sure it's right before you proceed with your build. Uh, for example, I did a whole version of this video just now, this last five minutes of content talking, where I accidentally put the RSSI on the wrong pin, okay? And then I went, oh, I screwed up. I double-checked it. So make this diagram. It's well worth it. And then double-check the diagram and triple-check it. And just make sure that everything's going where it needs to go. And then once you're confident that that's correct, you can then do your build and you can feel confident that you've thought of all the, all the places everything should go and you're not making any mistakes. All right. Well. In the next video, I will start showing you the actual construction of this little electronics pod. But in the meantime, that's all for now. Happy flying.